Hey there, my name is Wes and I'd like to welcome you and I'm totally excited for you um, to start this .NET Core 2.0 MVC web project series. So I know firsthand how difficult it can be to learn something like ASP.NET on your own. So my goal with this series was to really create the resource that I wish had existed when I started learning .NET several years ago. So we're gonna cover a lot in this series, everything from code first, migrations, to building out a service layer, um, dependency injection, the model view controller design pattern, using uh, cloud services for a number of different um, purposes, including object storage and SQL database hosting. And we're even gonna deploy the application at the end of the series to Azure App Services. But there's definitely a lot to learn in this series, so I hope you're excited for it. I'm definitely excited to uh, go on this journey with you. And in fact, um, throughout the series, I'll be checking in occasionally um, so that we can kind of reflect on the progress that we're making, as well as kind of give you an idea of where the series is headed. So as far as prerequisites go, it would certainly help if you've had some experience doing object-oriented programming in the past, either in C-sharp or Java or a similar language. But strictly speaking, it's not necessary as you could just um, follow along. And I think oftentimes that's the best way to learn something new is to just kind of follow along and get your feet wet and then just practice. So one small word of encouragement I'd like to give you if you are coming at this as a brand new developer, or perhaps you've just dabbled a little bit and are looking to get into web development, is just to remind you that software development is difficult and it takes time um, to learn and it takes an incredibly long time to get good at. That's something that I work at every day and it's really that training process, the learning process, um, that makes it all worthwhile and that makes it fun. So I guess that's about it. Uh, most importantly, I'd like to thank you and I'd also like to congratulate you on taking this first step towards learning .NET Core 2.0 for web development. So like I said, I'll be in touch throughout this series. So let's go ahead and dive right in and take a demo of the application that we'll be building in this series. Thanks. Okay, so here is a look at the form application that we'll be building together over the course of this series. So you can see we have a headline here on a landing page and a search box, as well as a list of some latest posts, as well as the form that they're in and who posted them. So let's go ahead and just throw a search query here. And so we'll search for posts that contain the word generics. And so our search is actually gonna pull back any posts that contain our search query in the title or in the post content. So it brings up a single post here in our results and we can see the number of replies as well as the date that this was posted. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click in here. And so this is our standard post page and this is what it's gonna look like. So at the top we have the title and then the user who posted it. We can also see if that user is an admin and then each of the users also have a score. And so we'll be developing a system to keep track of user scores. And we can work that logic sort of any way you like. In this series, it's gonna be based on the number of replies and posts that a user has. And so we have the post at the top, and then as users post replies, um, they're just gonna get stacked here in this bottom area. Okay, notice also that I can select a username here. So if I click this, I'm actually gonna get taken to a login page here because I'm not yet authenticated. And so if we just go ahead and log in, we can get taken to this user's profile page and just see some basic information about them as well as a profile image. And in this series, we'll actually take a look at how to host these images in the cloud using Azure. We'll just click on, we'll click on settings here. And then if I click on profile, you can see that I now have the ability to upload a new profile image. So I won't upload a new image here for the purposes of the demo, but when we get to the profile page, we'll look at how to actually do that. And yeah, so we can see some basic information about the user as well as whether or not they're an admin. Okay, and since I'm an admin here in my settings dropdown, I also have the ability to see a full list of the various users of the system. And I can also create new forums. And so just some basic forms here to create some new forms. And here we'll also look at how to upload forum images. So for instance, if I click on the forums link, we'll get taken to a page which lists all of the forums in the system. And each of those, if you prefer, can have an image associated with them. 
And so here we can see the number of posts as well as the distinct number of active users on each of these forums and a description. Also note that if a forum has a recent post in it, then we're going to be able to dynamically apply this hot tag. So we can go ahead and let's just click on the Python forum. And yeah, so here we get another view of our posts. We also have another search box here, and this search box will be used to actually search any posts within this forum. So if I type in managers here, then we're just gonna get the single Python post back that has the Python package managers title. Also notice that when we don't have any replies to the post, um, we get a message out here saying that, and since we're logged in now, we actually also have the ability to go ahead and post a reply. And when we submit, we get taken back to that page and we can see our reply here. Okay, so that is our application in a nutshell. It's gonna take quite a lot of work to get it to this point from scratch, but that's exactly what we're gonna do now. We're gonna go in and take a look at the architecture, including our data layer, in which we'll be using a SQL Server. We'll be looking at our services layer and we'll look at how .NET Core allows us to inject our services into our web layer, so into our controllers. And we'll look at how to structure our web layer using the model view controller design pattern. We'll be looking at actually writing unit tests using the NUnit framework and .NET Core's in-memory database. And last but not least, we'll also be looking at cloud storage, cloud database hosting, and cloud application hosting, all using Azure. And so I'm not sure if you can see, but in my title bar here, this is actually hosted um, using Azure. So this is a live example that is currently on the web. So as I said, we've got a lot of ground to cover, but we're gonna try to cover everything in some detail in this course so that by the end, you really will have done full stack development and completed a pretty substantial web application that will hopefully not only be useful for you as a developer, but perhaps even useful in general as an application that you might build on and expand in the future. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at how to get this application started. And the first thing that we're gonna do is actually install Visual Studio 2017 and SQL Server Management Studio. So let's go take a look. Okay, and since we'll be using .NET Core 2.0 for this series, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you also have the .NET Core uh, SDK downloaded. And so if you just head over to microsoft.com slash net slash download slash core at this time anyway, and scroll down and just make sure that you install the correct installer for your operating system. So I'll be using Windows and so you can just go ahead and download the executable here and get the SDK installed. It's a pretty large file so it may take some time as with all the tools in this series but that's gonna be required for us to actually get started. Also, if you're interested, you can go ahead and select on one of these step-by-step -step instructions to kind of look at how to get set up. It's pretty simple, really. You just download the SDK and get it installed. And if you'd like to take it for a quick, quick run, then you can actually um, run a simple application from the command line by following these steps here. So yeah, once .NET Core 2.0 is installed, we should be more or less ready to go. I should also note that the terminal that I'll be using in this video series is called Commander. And so you can check that out over at cmder.net if you're on Windows. This is a really nice console emulator. Um, it's gonna allow us to actually run bash commands, which is a nice alternative to PowerShell, especially if you're coming from a Unix background or if you just prefer the Unix command set. So this is good to install. And also if you want to follow along completely, I'll also be using Git for version control throughout this series. And so if you'll be checking your code into a remote repository, which I would definitely recommend in this series, since we have a lot of code to write and to track, go ahead and make sure that Git is installed on your system as well. And again, if you're on Windows, you can install it with Git for Windows which is actually gonna be packaged with Commander or you can download it separately here. And Git for Windows is also going to come with its own uh, Git bash shell. Okay, with that, let's go ahead and fire up Visual Studio 2017. Okay, so in order to install Visual Studio, just head over to visualstudio.com and then select download Visual Studio. And in this course, I'm just gonna be using Community 2017 edition. 
and we'll just close this pop-up. And so hopefully you should just see a installer get downloaded. So go ahead and run that and get Visual Studio 2017 Community Edition set up. And that's what I'm gonna be using to do all of the development in this course, but it's also useful for doing things like web deploys. Okay, the next thing that you should have set up is Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. This is also free. I'm using version 17.2. So just go ahead and download the latest version here. And then finally, um, you'll also wanna make sure that you have SQL Server 2016 Express installed. And you can download that directly, but you should also be provided the option to install that with um, SQL Server Management Studio or perhaps even Visual Studio when you get those applications installed. But if you find that you can't connect to local DB when we get to the point of the tutorial where we're actually interacting with our database for the first time, go ahead and bookmark this page so that you can just directly download it and be sure that it's installed from here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and fire up Visual Studio 2017 and we're gonna create our new project. 